Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White, I'm an employment attorney on this channel. We answer public posts and questions from YouTube users, getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. We have a question here from YouTube user TB Robertson 24 who asks us, Good afternoon, Mr. White, I really enjoy your videos. I really enjoy your taste in videos. I hope they're helpful in some way. I have one question. My attorney sent the discovery package to my previous job who I presume you're suing or bringing a claim against, what if my previous employer does not follow the instructions and does not submit the documentation required? Allow me to regale you with a magical, magical device called the Motion to Compel Production. Listen, it's going to be a little different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, so check with local counsel. But essentially, um, during almost every discovery back and forth, one side, both sides, all sides. We'll receive a request and they might say, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I think that's unduly burdensome or I think you're a jack hat or I think that uh, it's possible your mother dropped you on your head twice and then stepped on you. And you're not going to get that from me. And there is recourse for that. You run to the judge, and you tattle. Ya Anna, Ya Anna, they won't give me the thing I asked for. And the other side makes their argument, which could range from, it's unduly burdensome, it's, it's invasive, it's not relevant to the matter at hand. Or counsel's mother dropped him on his head twice and then stepped on him. And listen, depending on the strength of the argument, they might prevail. That's certainly possible. That I've seen that happen where they don't have to turn it over. Certainly, we too have experienced the same things, right? Where we've said, uh, yeah, we're not going to turn that over. And there's a big fight about it. Sometimes you even have to go in and have oral arguments about it. Theoretically, there could even be a hearing about it in some jurisdictions. But usually it's motion practice, like, hey, that mean events is not giving me what I want. I'm over here like, yeah, that's right. Come and get it. You can pry that discovery from my cold dead hands. And and their take is, uh, well, we'd like to, but that's illegal. So we're going to call the judge instead. And the judge is going to decide. She or he will, will say, I am all powerful in this courtroom. And we'll kind of look at each other like, is this judge for real? And then the judge will say, I have decided so-and-so gets the discovery or so-and-so does not need to produce the items in question or I will split the baby half of the things that are being asked for must be produced the other half need not or any mix in between and so you have a decision now if they continue to refuse to produce even though they've been ordered, so ordered by a judge or a magistrate or an arbitrator, whoever it might be, well, that's what we call contempt. They're in contempt of court. And that, well, it's got consequences. It's got consequences for attorneys. It's got consequences for, for parties to an action. It's got consequences for plaintiffs. It's got consequences for defendants. It's got consequences for anybody who wants to tangle with a judge. Because, uh, listen, I love judges. Judges have been very good to me. But sticking a pin into the ego of a judge with the intent of deflating that judge's ego, which is largely what you're doing when you decline to follow a judge's order, well, either you got an appeal filed and you got a good reason for that appeal. And that appeal has merit, potentially, and it could win. And the judge is going to behave. Or you don't. And you just did some dumbass shit. And this judge is coming for you. This judge is coming for you. And you are not going to like it. I will tell you right now. This judge will move heaven and earth to harm you. It is not personal. I've never seen a judge be like, well, I think you're being stupid, stupid, but it's not personal. It is personal. They, they, are, they are 
you are deflating the ego of a person who is rarely questioned. A person who operates, at least at work, with perceived impunity. And you do that for 10, 20 years. And some idiot comes along and says, yeah, but I don't think I have to do what you tell me, Judge. I'm going to just, I am just. I think you're an idiot. I'm going to do what I want. Good luck to you. I wish you luck. So the recourse, to recap, T.B. Robertson is as follows. They decline to produce what you ask for. Great. You make a motion to compel. You argue your motion. Hopefully you win your motion. Hopefully the judge orders that the items must be uh, produced to you in, in response to your motion to compel. Hopefully your motion to compel is granted. Then you say, great, I got a date by which this has got to be produced. If the other side declines again and they do not comply with that discovery order, talk with local counsel, but it's going to sound a lot like contempt of court. Talk you run back to that judge and you say, hey, judge. I think you're the big deal. I think you, Judge, you are the sun, the moon, and stars. You are a powerful judge. You, you are a powerful judge. Powerful. But that guy, that guy doesn't think so. That guy, he saw your order and he said, I'm not going to do it. And, and Judge, I just, I need you to know, I think you're powerful. Most powerful. All the power. You got the biggest decisions. All the best decisions. But... But that guy doesn't seem to think so. So what are you going to do to him? Because cause I, need, I need those docs for this case, right? This case right now is a middle risk, 200K. We could win. But if I get those docs, I'm sitting on a case where I probably win 80, 90% of the time, and I probably win between half a mil and a mil. So judge, I need those docs. And uh, if I could, I'd go knife somebody for him. But I can't. I hear that's illegal. So, Judge, I'm telling you, that guy, I told him what you said. You wrote it down. He read it. And he says you don't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't think you're powerful like I think you're powerful, Judge. So what are you going to do? You going to get him? Can I watch? And that's the ridiculous interplay of discovery motion practice. I don't know. I don't know. Am I losing my mind? It might be. T.B. Robertson, I hope this helps. If it did, like, subscribe, comment down below, share our channel so it can grow. Take care, everybody.